constitutes a gender-bending animal, it takes more than sharing parental duties, and I'm looking at you, seahorse. It takes more than just carrying a baby Bjorn sporting a few eggs to be considered a sex switcher. <laughs> When it comes to organisms switching sex, there are two different types. Simultaneous hermaphrodites and sequential hermaphrodites. Simultaneous hermaphrodites have both male and female reproductive parts for their entire life and can mate with any other member of their species. Sequential hermaphrodites are born as one sex, but change completely into the other sex during the course of their lives. Let's take a look at one of the most well-known examples of sequential hermaphroditism, anemone fish, also known as clownfish, or to kids, as Nemo. In the clownfish hierarchy, there is one sole female who mates with the males. When she dies, the largest male fish becomes the female and begins mating with the males. It's a simple solution to the problem of a low-density population. Most slugs are simultaneous hermaphrodites and have both a penis and a genital opening, so that when they have sex, they both fertilize and are fertilized. This allows them to reproduce more rapidly since they have both the goods, generating eggs and sperm, making them twice as productive as other species. In these examples, sex switching is a strategy that helps helps to support the group to which the species belongs. But what if you're an individual out there in the animal kingdom looking to increase your odds of survival on the mean streets of the ocean floor? Well, you might engage in what's known as pseudo-hermaphroditism, or a little gender subterfuge. The life of a female market squid is not an easy one. Hundreds of thousands of market squid gather to reproduce with aggressive behavior for the males that often cause injuries to the females. To make matters worse, right after laying tubes of eggs on the sea floor, Floor, females can easily be swept up into a new mating group, suffering more injuries, draining energy reserves, and generally making life a bummer. But female market squids are clever. They can control the appearance of a white stripe down part of their body that mimics the appropriate size, color, and position of testes on male squid. They do this by manipulating a type of cell called a leucophore, which produces the white coloration, causing them to appear male and thus safe from any would-be suitors. Female African bat bugs also employ visual tricks to escape something called traumatic insemination. That's when males indecorously stab females in the abdomen with their sharp penis and inject sperm. The female African bat bugs developed perigenitals, funnel-like genital openings laden with immune cells to help reduce the impact of injury. But one of the most intriguing accounts of pseudohermaphroditism comes to us by way of the hyena. The clitoris of the female-spotted hyena is greatly enlarged, so much so that it looks distinctly like a penis and is also capable of an Erection. Female spotted hyenas also sport a pair of fibrous filled sacs in the genital area, mimicking the appearance of a scrotum. Moreover, the females are socially dominant, larger, and far more aggressive than the males. There's no definitive reason for the pseudo penis of the spotted hyena, but one idea is that posturing as a male could help stave off attacks from other aggressive female hyenas. But what about a species that's half male and half female? While circus sideshows are the stuff of deception, in non mammalian species, you can find examples of this phenomenon called gyandromorphy. Behold examples such as the half-male, half-female tarantula in the Goldian Finch. You'll also see gyandromorphy in a Mormon butterfly, with its male and female reproductive organs fused down the middle, a result of sex chromosomes failing to properly separate when the fertilized egg developed. All of which brings us back to the idea that gender is indeed in the eye of the beholder. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. <laughs> Animals, they're amazing, right? They can do all sorts of strange, fascinating things, and some even have superpowers, by which I mean extraordinary abilities that sound like something straight out of a comic book. As far as animals go, humans are pretty swell. Our brilliant brains have taken us across the globe and even into space. But we're not the only nerdy animals on this rock. Are you worried about feeding your kids and making sure they conform to societal norms? Hey, Mom. Me too. That's why I give my kids gender roles.